In this section, we'll go over the basic workflow for using Fractal Terrain. First, create a new composition and then create a solid with the same dimensions. Apply the effect by going to Effect Crossphere Fractal Terrain. You can check if GPU acceleration is enabled in File Project Settings. Adjust the overall height of the terrain using the Height Offset parameter. Let's increase this value to pull the terrain down. Next, add a camera and a light to the composition. Enable the Cast Shadows property to have it cast shadows onto the terrain. Now we'll start applying a texture to the terrain. We've readjusted the height. To improve the look, apply a depth of field blur from Post Effects Depth of Field. From the atmospheric color set in Post Effects Atmosphere, create a solid of the same color and use it for the background. Finally, we'll add some camera movement and render the animation. Here's the result after rendering. Notice the unwanted rendering artifacts in the area highlighted in red. Now we'll fix this. To fix it, we're going to adjust the raycast parameters under rendering. We'll increase the max steps value, decrease the stride value, and increase the precision value. This improves the accuracy of the raycast and fixes the rendering issue.
Next, let's look at the functions of base terrain and flatten. First, to see the effect of base terrain, we'll temporarily flatten the terrain by lowering the amplitude parameter. Within base terrain, changing the shape from none to another option will generate large-scale terrain elevation. By increasing the height to a large negative value, we can elevate the terrain upwards. Scale determines the size of the area affected by base terrain. For clarity, we've set it to a small value for now. We'll readjust it later. By setting the curvature to a large positive or negative value, you can bend the elevated terrain. We'll repeatedly adjust these values. Once these values are roughly set, we'll return the amplitude to its original value to bring back the detailed fractal undulations, then fine-tune the base terrain values. Now let's experiment with the flatten function. Enabling the flatten high parameter allows you to flatten the parts of the terrain that are above the threshold parameter. By increasing the blend parameter, you can mix it with the original terrain height to create a natural slightly undulating flattened area. After further adjusting the parameters, we arrived at these final settings. From here, we'll take a closer look at how to use textures. As an example, we'll use the text layer currently displayed as a texture. We'll set this to T2 texture, which is the third of the four texture parameters. To see how the texture coordinate parameters work, we'll switch the wrapping mode from repeat to none. This prevents the texture from repeating so only the texture at the specified coordinate origin is displayed. To further clarify the relationship between coordinates and the texture, we'll use a 3D null layer and link it to the texture's coordinate parameters.
We'll use the Pick Whip to link the texture's coordinate parameters to the null layer's position and rotation. We've reset the camera position. By controlling the null layer linked to the texture's coordinates, you can see the texture's position moves in sync. Specifically, the texture is being projected along the z-axis of the 3D null layer. Next, let's look at the texture's clipping function. What is currently displayed is a texture with transparent areas created with fractal noise. We've set this texture to T1 texture. A texture that looks like snow has been applied over the entire terrain. To limit this snowy area to just the mountain peaks, we'll use the clipping function. The clipping function is only enabled when the max value of the clipping coordinates for each axis is greater than the min value. Furthermore, by increasing the feather value, we can add a gradient to the boundary, helping the clipping blend in naturally. The snowy texture is now restricted only to the mountain peak areas. Finally, we are adjusting the size of the text texture. That wraps up our quick overview of the basic workflow for fractal terrain. It's amazing how you can create terrain with entirely different looks just by changing a few parameters and textures. If you want to try more complex terrains, 
The specific settings used in the promo videos are provided in the included documentation. Be sure to check it out and use it as a reference for your own projects.